peace. Peace. That is the, that is the gift that, that Jesus gives uh, his disciples, and by extension to you and me in the, the gospel text today. Now, that gospel text is taken from what, uh, you know, educators call the farewell discourse of Jesus, the gift of peace. Uh, and he goes on to say this gift of peace is not the way the world gives peace. And, of course, that begs the question, uh, what's the difference? So we start with the world's peace. What is this peace that the world gives? And, and the world's peace comes uh, in a variety of flavors. It just does. It comes in a variety of flavors. We're only going to talk about three of them this morning. Uh, the first flavor is um, escapism. Escapism. It's a it's a world peace, and and it's really just a. I just want some peace and quiet. You know, it's the old bath soap commercial. Remember that? Calgon, take me away. <laughs> you know, we just want to get away. You know, um, in fact, we call vacations getaways, and we all have our way of escaping. That a kind of form of world peace. Some of us are those kind that do things like, hey, did you watch the last episode of Game of Thrones? <laughs> you know? uh, escapism into the world of shows and fantasies. But there's other escapisms. There's the uh, electronic devices. Oh, this is great. This is great. All that craziness in the world, but here I am. Um, there are others. Uh, shopping can be one, you know. Uh, eating can be one. That drink at the end of the day, oh, how I long for that. Um, and the world talks about that as, as peace. But of course, the reality is that at best it's temporary because it is by its very nature simply escape and that the world, the craziness, all kind of crushes in back on us at some point along the way. Uh, with a renewed intensity, and some of us wind up saying things like, it's like I never got away. It's all there. Uh, peace? Uh, not really. Not really. Second flavor. Second flavor. And, and that is a truce. Uh, you don't resolve the conflict. Uh, it's just you stop fighting. And the world says, good enough. We'll just call that peace. You know, I'm, I'm a child of, of the Cold War. You know, I grew up like most of you, you know, with that whole reality that the Soviet Union has lots of nuclear weapons and we have lots of nuclear weapons and going to war, fighting each other is not in our best interest. You know, so we have a truce because of the fear of mutual destruction. And we call that peace. You know, we got close to kind of having that fall apart, the Cuban Missile Crisis and things like that, but it's been peace. But of course, the reality of it is, is that uh, the tension, uh, the conflict remains. Um, we have just put it to the side a little bit. Uh, it's no longer the Soviet Union, but Russia is still an adversary. We are still in conflict with one another. Uh, peace? Not really. Not really. The final flavor for this morning is, uh, and we know this one too, uh, giving up. How many times have you heard somebody say, or you have said it yourself? <sighs> for the sake of peace and harmony, I, I give up. <laughs> I just give in. You know, it's just not worth it to fight anymore, you know, whatever you want, good enough, I just, I'm done with it. It's funny, this week, uh, we were talking about that uh, down at Trenton, down at the Senate office, uh, you know, periodically we meet as all as senior pastors with the bishop. Well, there's a lot of us senior pastors who are retiring this year, but we kind of are reflecting on ministry, and one of the things that we reflected on is, you have no idea how many issues there are in a church, you know, because you just have that many people. So everybody's got a hot ticket, things that they are concerned about and anxious about and drive them crazy. And as a pastor, you're a recipient of all of that stuff. 
And we were sitting around the table, and we were all going, because we've been in the ministry for a long time, you just have to pick and choose your battles. You just can't fight them all. It's just some of them you just go, you know what? Just going to let it ride. I'm just going to let it ride and call it good. Peace? Well, not really. So those are the world flavors of peace. And then Jesus comes and says, um, I'm going to give you peace, a gift unlike the world's peace. And so how is that different? How is Jesus' peace given to his disciples, to you, to me, different? And, and, and Jesus enters this whole business of the gift of peace in a very different direction. Very different direction. Because most of the time when we think about peace is that if everything just settles down out there, if that all kind of resolves itself, you know, if there's peace out there, then there can be peace in me. And Jesus says, wrong direction. Wrong direction. We got to start with peace in you. Peace in me. We got to start there. And if you have that, if peace is there, then you will be at peace even when the world is going crazy. What scripture talks about is the brokenness we experience in the world is a reflection of the brokenness in us. That's how it happens. It's a reflection of the brokenness in us. That's the reality of it. And what happens is, and we know that in our experience, is that whatever's going on at us is reflected in the world out there. It just, that's what happens. It's funny, we were talking about going to the ocean, but going to the ocean, we don't have many kind of like the Ten Commandments. But one of the Ten Commandments is that if you are in a bad mood, you're going to bed early that night. (laughs) You're in a bad mood, you're going to bed, because it usually is a function of you just are too tired. And the reality is, why do we send you to bed? Because your bad mood is impacting all the rest of us, you know? And so we got to take care of that. So we're going to take care of you. Go to bed, get some sleep. We'll talk to you in the morning. So Jesus says, it all begins, this whole business of peace. we got to talk about the brokenness in you that spills out into the brokenness of the world. So how do you tend the brokenness in your own life? And we all carry that. Well, very interesting is that the word peace in Hebrew is the word shalom, and you've probably have heard that word. But in many things in Scripture, the words of Scripture carry much more weight than the English translation. I'm not saying peace is a bad word. No, it's a really good word. But when you talk about shalom, uh, it, it's a much richer word because it really talks about what Hebrew would talk about is wholeness. Wholeness. That's really the quality of peace. And Jesus who says, I want to make you whole. And when you're made whole, you're at peace. And when you're at peace, all the red stuff out there, you can live with all of that. Because you will be at peace. So how how are we made whole in the brokenness of our lives? The formula is really very easy. And all of us experience it. When Are you whole? We are whole when we are loved. We are whole when we are forgiven. We are whole when we are valued. That's the truth. And you know it. You know it in very human terms because you experience it that way. I stand before you, and when do I feel most whole? You know, right now in my life, when do I feel the most whole? I'm sitting on the couch, and, and my granddaughters are leaning against their pop-up. And I have my arms around them, and we just cuddle together. And, and in that experience, and in that moment, in that embrace, in that unconditional kind of love for their pop-up, you know, I'm at peace. I'm absolutely 
at peace, even though the world is crazy around me in that moment. In that moment, I'm whole. Changes everything. Jesus, who said to his disciples, to you, to me, I'm here to make you whole. That's where peace begins. I'm here to make you whole, to tend the brokenness in your life. No, no, you are loved deeply, profoundly. No, you are forgiven for whatever you have done or failed to do in your life. And no, no, and that in my sight, you are valued. You are mine now and forever. You live in that grace? Guess what? You're at peace. Even when the world is going crazy. That's the gift. Jesus gives. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and our minds through Christ Jesus. Amen.